Hi, in this video I'm going to introduce you to a great way of taking notes. Cornell Notes was developed in the 1950s by an education professor at Cornell University, Walter Puck. Firstly, what's wrong with the way that you're taking notes right now? If you're just writing a list of key points, you're only engaging with the material once. Sure, you have those points available for reference later, but you're not doing very much to help embed the knowledge into your long-term memory. There's a lack of re-engagement with the material. This is where Cornell Notes comes in. First of all, take your A4 page and approximately one third of the way across, draw a line that goes almost to the bottom of the page. Leave about five lines spare at the bottom and then draw a horizontal line at this point. Begin by writing the title of whatever topic you're studying at the top of the right hand side. In this case, let's make some notes about Cornell Notes. As you're in class, revising or watching a lecture, you should write down the key points in the right hand side. Don't try to cram too much in and make sure that you're only writing down the most important details. After you've finished making those key points, you can now move on to the next stage of your revision. We will complete the remaining sections of this page over the next two days. As discussed in a previous video about how to revise and make it stick, forgetting is your friend. You want to do a little bit of forgetting about what you've just studied in order that when you remember it again, you've got a greater chance of storing it in your long term memory. So 24 hours on, we now need to write some summary questions down the left hand side of this page. Each question needs to be answered by the key point that we've written to the right here. So for this first one, and so on for the remaining questions. By thinking of these questions, it's given you an opportunity to re-engage with the content that you've written on the right hand side, making you think about it again a second time in detail, 24 hours on, to identify anything that you may have forgotten in the meantime. We'll come on to the second benefit of those questions in just a moment. But what about this section we've left blank at the bottom of the page? This is for writing a summary. So, further 24 hours after writing the questions, that's 48 hours after you wrote the original text, you should now write a very brief summary, just a, one or two sentences to sum up what has been written in the notes above. It's important that your summary is as brief as possible to encourage you to pull out the most salient, important details from your original notes. Now for me, the biggest advantage of Cornell Notes is yet to come. When you return to your notes, as you should regularly throughout the year, to ensure spaced interleaved practice, take a second sheet of paper and cover up the right hand side. Now you'll see that you have revision questions and the answers are covered up. So test yourself. When was it invented? Well, I think it was invented in the 1950s by a professor at Cornell University called Walter Puck. Let's check the answer. Correct. Why is it better than conventional note taking? Well, it ensures that I'm re engaging with the material, which fulfills the requirements of effective revision, and it be spaced out that forgetting is our friend. What are its other benefits? Well, it will generate a list of revision questions that you can use to test yourself on the content that you're revising. One final point about Cornell Notes. In 2007, a study by Wichita State University found that the Cornell note-taking system was an effective strategy for students taking notes, especially where they'd be required to evaluate, apply, synthesize the knowledge, that is, to make links between topics and to apply knowledge to unusual situations. This makes it an excellent tool for preparing for GCSE and A-level exams in almost any subject. 